of uh, seams coming together, some deep buckets, anywhere where fast water goes and drops off into slower water, where those fish can be nice and relaxed in that deeper water. Fast water's bringing them the food. They don't have to move too much because they're in the slower water down below. Um, great spot to, uh, to try, your, try your fishing. Throwing nymphs up those seams and just dragging them down, down through those seams. Again, the bottom of an island there, you'll see that real slow water right in the middle there, a great spot. And even down below these riffles, where it speeds up and then it slows down again into some slower water, where fast water meets slow, a great place to, uh, to throw your line. This guy's throwing it up against a steep bank here. It's actually quite slow between the bank and, and where he's fishing. Uh, again, over on this other side here, below that gravel bar, uh, anywhere below the gravel bar, if there's depth there, there's probably going to be fish there. Because they're just getting out of that fast water, hanging in that slower water. Here's a nice slow, slow bend. That far bank, it's actually quite deep over there. Um, he's just trying to get out in that deeper water. Uh, it's a slow bank. And those fish will stack up in that area because they've got everything they need. They've got the deeper water, they've got the fast water bringing them oxygen as well as the food, and they're just hanging in those areas. Now, the Bow River, there's a uh, fish creek there. There's Glenmore right there. Right about here is the sewage treatment plant. And that's really why the river is so good. Everybody says, well, sewer, what's that going to be? Well, the sewer creates lots of uh, nutrients for the plants. And the bugs love the plants, and the fish love the bugs. And literally, you can hit that sewage treatment plant if you're rowing down in the boat, and from the sewage treatment plant, you can see a green line in the middle of summer going across the river where that water comes in. And up above, it's kind of all gray, and there's not a lot of growth and stuff. But as soon as it hits that nutrient water, um, the bottom is just covered with weeds, and those bugs love those weeds. So you'll find the majority of the fish down below that sewage treatment plant. You know, they're above it as well, but the majority of the fish are down below that sewage treatment plant. And that's where we kind of concentrate our fishing, from Glenmore um, all the way down to Carsland. We've got about 60 miles of fishing there, uh, just prime fishing water. You know, we've got the, the runs, the faster water, slower water, all through there. Um, launches, Glenmore's a good launch flight. Glenmore to 22, you can do that in a day, you kind of slow down. Uh, usually Glenmore to Policeman's though is the, the uh, kind of a full day float. Policeman's down to McKinnon is a full day float, and McKinnon down to um, Legacy, you can stretch that into a full day if you do some stopping and uh, head hunting, or down to Cars Land. So there's, there's those access spots that you can get to the river. Um, if you're willing to walk, you can find water you know, you don't have to fish right by the bridge. You don't have to fish right beside the uh, parking lot. If you're willing to walk, you can find some fantastic water. And you can find water that you'll have all to yourself. Um, in the city, there's lots of access spots along the river. And uh, again, I always tell people that if you go down to the water and you're looking around and you see people fishing in an area, you see them catching fish, well, they're there for a reason. And if you can get back there another day or when no one's there, chances are there's going to be fish there. If you don't you don't have anywhere to start, you know, you can come in the fly shop, we'll tell you where to go. We'll even draw you a little X on the map there and, and help you out that way. But if you want to do it yourself, um, there's a lot of good information on this uh, board here. This is the board down at Fish Creek Park. You know, it talks a little bit about angling etiquette, it talks about handling the fish, uh, what to expect. Uh, the distances between, you know, if you've never floated the river before and you're wondering how long it's going to take you to get from here to here, um, it's got some of that information on there, the distance and, and floating um, distance. So you can kind of gauge your day if you want to, uh, you know, do a full day. We put in one time at Glenmore, and it was probably 10 o'clock in the morning, and these three pontoon guys were putting in and we asked them where they were going. Oh, we're going to cars now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> do, do you realize how long that is? Oh, yeah, we've done it. I mean, and this was, I think, late in the season, so it wasn't a warm day. I mean, I remember there being um, ice on the boat that morning, and they were going all the way down. And yeah, I just, 
wished them good luck and told them, you know, it's a long trip. There's a couple spots in between that you could stop if you need to, but they were determined to get down to Carson. So know where you're going. There's a lot of, uh, uh, if you check on the internet, uh, there'll be some maps as well that'll give you a little bit of information on where to go. Now, this is the part that, uh, you know, I love taking my kids fishing. And if you guys have kids or grandkids, the Bow River is a great place. You don't necessarily have to start in the Bow River. I mean, we've got, if you have access to any of the community lakes, uh, Sundance, the Chaparral, any of those community lakes, they have some big fish in them. And you get those fish hooked into some of those fish, um, they're going to be hooked. Now, if you're going to take kids fishing, I wouldn't recommend doing a full day outing with them, um, you know, floating from McKinnon down to Carson. You know, it's a long day float. Chances are those kids are going to get bored being kids. I know my kids, you know, after about an hour, they're more than happy to get out on an island somewhere and start flipping rocks and playing on the island, and then I'll go fishing for them. So I always try to start doing short floats with them. You know, do a short float or do a, you know, a short couple of hours of fishing if you're going to a lake or something. Um, something that's not too overwhelming for them. tell you a little story with my, 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 I started them young and then I figured the younger you can start them the better. Um, we have a little pike pond down below, um, out in the country there, down below Pinebrook Golf Course. We live close to there. And I know the guy that lives down there, so he lets us have access to it. And we went down there and Peyton caught his first couple of fish there, my oldest boy. And Derek, um, the one sitting on the seat there, they're a lot older now. I mean, Derek's taller than me for crying out loud. But I remember his first day of fishing. We went down to this pond, and uh, there's pike in this pond. Pike, you know, it's the right time of year, they're pretty easy to catch. So we went down there, and I put a jig on a couple feet down below an indicator, or a big bobber, and I threw it out there, and handed little Derek a rod, and I go to hook up Peyton's rod, and two seconds later, I think I got one. Sure enough, he's got this fish on. So he brings it in, and we take some pictures, and let him go. And I get Peyton's rod rigged up, and I cast them both out there. Boom! Both of them got fish on. So they reeled those in. So Derek's thinking, this is pretty good, you know, three casts, three fish. And he'd been practicing enough, he could get it out there. So he throws it out there, reels it up, and he lifts up the hook, and it's hanging right in front of his face. And you could tell he was thinking, he's just staring at it. And he turns to me and says, Dad, there's not a fish on my hook. I said, son, you don't catch one every cast. I mean, he'd seen three and three casts, so he figured, why not? So his expectations were pretty high. So when I took these guys fishing down the river, you know, the, the pressure was on to get him into fish. And there's my youngest guy. When he was little, we would get in the river there and float down. And again, the fish are in the same spot. So if you drag the hooks through those spots enough time, they're going to hook fish. So we would hook these fish and little Brody of the rod and let them reel them in. And there's nothing like a kid's face when he catches a nice fish and you put those fish in the hands. They're, you know, that's some of my best, best memories of these boys when we're fishing out there catching these fish and the looks on these kids' face when they catch uh, these fish. And everybody wants to hold them, you know. I said, no, no, only one at a time. You can't hold the fish too long. We've got to get it back in the water. So they know how to hold the fish now and they know that we're taking care of these fish, getting them back in the water. And that's Peyton's very first fish on a fly rod. He did it all by himself, so he was pleased as punch. You know, fish jumped over the oar, wrapped himself up. I don't know how he stayed on, but he stayed on. We landed him. A couple guys across the river cheering him on, so he was pretty pumped to catch his own fish. So there's lots of opportunities to take your kids fishing. It doesn't have to be fly fishing. You can start them off with a spinning rod. Um, every time we go on holidays, somehow we seem to end up by the water and on a fishing boat. Don't know how that happens, but they love going out fishing in these on these uh, party boats like this. Uh, in fact, we'll be going to Seattle here again in a couple of uh, weeks, and I'm sure we'll end up on a boat out there catching whatever. Doesn't matter what they're catching, as long as they're catching and having fun. Now, ladies, I know there's quite a few ladies here, and that's great. I mean, ladies make some of the best fisher people. Let's say fishermen. Um, Quite often we'll get uh, ladies that come on, on floats with us in groups. Tell you the truth, they make the best fisher people because they actually listen to you when you're talking to them. And they go, oh, don't quit. 
I don't know how many times we'll take couples with us, and the lady's never fished before. The guy, oh yeah, I know how to fish. I've been doing it for years. And we'll get him in the boat, and he'll be in the back, and we'll put the lady in the front, and she'll outfish from two to one. And he's wondering why, you know, why he's not catching as many fish. Well, she's just doing what she's told, and she she can't stall a fish. So we've had quite a few ladies on our trips, um, corporate trips and stuff. Um, these ladies catching fish. And some of them never fly fish before. So that's one nice thing about going out with a guide. You know, you don't have to know how to do it. So you get the lesson right there in the boat and you, you get to go fishing and actually catch fish. And there's a good chance on the boat river uh, you're going to catch some fish. Fathers and sons, um, I've been fortunate enough to take a lot of father sons. You know, if the kids are small enough, we'll throw two of them in the boat. Only one of them is fishing at a time. Um, but a great way for the fathers and, and sons to get out there and do some fishing together. A couple of other father-son groups that we've taken out. Um, often we'll take, if, 